Here, I've got the Corgo P6 native. It's the same sound engine as you get in the hardware, but it's software and it comes standalone or for your door. And I've got this one working on an M1 Mac in Logic. And this is currently $149, moving to $199. But if you've got the hardware, it's only $49. So sort of no brainer for me for £37. And while I've been playing with it, I realized it actually, because it's quite graphical, it's a really good way of explaining exactly how FM synthesis works. So I thought I'd do a really short tutorial, just going over the very basics, just to give a rough understanding of exactly what it's all about. And that's your typical FM sound. So exactly what's going on there. FM just means frequency modulation. And in this case, we're modulating operator one with operator two. They're called operators. I just call them oscillators, really. If we go into the algorithms, this is the bit that really confuses everybody. We've got 40 algorithms there. What on earth's going on? Well, effectively, everything in blue you can't hear is just modulating other stuff. So here in algorithm one, operator two is modulating operator one. We only hear operator one and the result of operator two working on it. So we don't hear two at all. Um, we can hear three, but we can't hear six, five, and four. Six is modulating five and itself. Five's modulating four and four's modulating three, and we listen to three. So on algorithm one, we're only hearing one and three. Algorithm two, we're only hearing one and three as well. And I think people get confused by this, and I get confused by it, because you've no idea what each of these algorithms is going to do, I suppose, unless you're really deeply into programming them, and you know exactly what you're going to get from them. And that's the horrible starting point that everybody looks at and gives up straight away. But actually, it's not that complicated. So what am I talking about? Let's just kick off. We've got operator 2 modulating operator 1. Everything's on a sine wave here, like it was on the original DX7. Let's just drop those envelopes down, that release down a bit on each of them. So we're just listening to oscillator one, oscillator two, or operator two isn't doing anything at the minute. If we turn operator two up, can't hear it. If we turn oscillator one down, you can't hear a thing. Because all it's doing is having an effect on oscillator one. Think of it as an LFO, basically really fast LFO. And the higher the signal level, the more effect it has. And you can hear there, as I increase the level of two, it's doing different things to one. Let's put this onto ratios for a minute. Because that's the next bit everyone gets confused about. The ratios are the ratio of the frequency of oscillator two to the frequency of oscillator one. So when the ratio is one, it's the same frequency. As we turn it up, Every ratio here that's just got zeros after it, so that's an integer, is related to the main frequency or the frequency at the minute that oscillator one's at. And what am I talking about if you don't really know much about harmonic frequencies? Let's look at a sawtooth. This has got all of them in it. If I play something down here. I'm playing at 100 hertz and we can hear 200, 300, 400, 500. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 800, 1000. Obviously, we're listening to all of the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All of these ratios here. And that's just a way of giving you really nice melodic tones. If you don't want melodic, take it off that. And you can get stuff that goes all sort of crazy. And this is where we get those FM bell style tones from. Two isn't related to one, so the output's all metallic and clangy.
But put it onto an integer. Much more melodic. And we've got sub ratios as well. So this is half the frequency. So if I play something higher up. We get subharmonics. Here I'm playing a sine wave at about a thousand. Bring in some subharmonics, so sub ratios. We're getting tones below that fundamental. But all you've really got to remember is that ratios are related to the fundamental frequency. In other words, things are a bit more melodic. So we've got a really simple setup here. We've got two sine waves. Two is going into one. So two is modulating one. So let's put this on a ratio, I don't know, of just of one, just to keep it nice and simple for now. So we've changed the shape of the waveform we're listening to. And we change that over time using the envelopes. So let's drop the sustain level on two. And if you understand subtractive synthesis and you can program an analog synth, this is a bit like a filter envelope, really. On a most FM synths, you don't have an analog filter because you're dropping down to a sine wave, which is what a low pass filter does. Let's go back into the mode and change the ratio. And that, to me, sounds like a lovely digital bass line. Very simple sound, but it's got that digital tone, hasn't it? Put a bit of attack on. Let's do a bit of a wah wah bass. And that's it, but on this we do have some additional waveforms. Let's just turn this one down for now. Got all these. Assigning 12 bit. The 8 bit's nice and grainy. You'll need speakers or headphones to hear that though. And all these additive ones create intervals. They sound a little bit like an organ, don't they? And the reason why we have these is because, again, we work on the ratios and the harmonics. So if we put this one back on a sign, put number two on one with an interval, so it's got a couple of harmonics in there. We're getting something really harmonically rich. That's like a nice slap bass, is it? And a little bit of the digital piano. We just put a little bit of release on there. And that's unmistakably an FM tone. Let's go back to something like the sawtooth. Let's turn it back into a bass. 
drop that release down. Nice and powerful that, isn't it? And you can hear that sort of filtering effect as the level of oscillator 2 drops. Really nice that, but unlike on most FM synths, we do actually have a filter on this. That's the MS-20 high pass. Let's just add operator three. Let's, let's turn that into, I don't know, a square. Let's modulate that with four and five, and I'm just chucking stuff together here so that we can hear what the different algorithms do. Let's just throw these round a bit. And you can hear there we're getting a range of tones depending on how it's been set up. Let's add six and add a bit of feedback in there as well. So now six is modulating itself a bit and it sort of turns the sound from a sign all the way into noise. As you can hear there. So that's six and five looping back. So there you go, a very brief overview of how FM synthesis works. I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. And if it was, please think about subscribing, ringing the bell, join me on Patreon, and all the rest of it. And I might be putting this up against the OP6 hardware itself soon, but I've got to say, it basically is the same. <laughs>